All right, I'm gonna tie you a deer hair slider. It's a really good, very versatile uh, topwater streamer. It's uh, equally good in saltwater and freshwater. It's really good on largemouth and smallmouth bass. Um, in the salt, it'll catch just about anything that would be interested in eating a topwater bait fish pattern. Stuff like snook, striped bass, bluefish, uh, baby tarpon, a whole bunch of stuff will eat this fly. And it's a really neat, fairly unique uh, deer hair pattern. And uh, we'll get started here. Uh, first thing I do is put into the vise a, uh, an extra long shank saltwater hook. You can also tie this guy on a shorter shank hook. Um, you know, if you wanted to tie some for tarpon or something where you might want a little bit more stout of a hook, you'll just end up with a, uh, a fly that doesn't look exactly quite like this one, and that's perfectly fine. All right, the very first thing we're going to do is we're just going to get, we're going to start the thread right at the point of the hook and wind back to just above the barb. We're going to keep this part of the shank clean for us spinning and packing deer here. And you can tie this guy in a bunch of different colors. I mean, pretty much the sky is the limit. Um, good common colors are an all-white version, red and white, chartreuse, yellow, black. Um, but you can kind of come up with your own color combinations to, to what colors you like. And the first thing I do is pick out a couple of saddle hackles. Um, you don't want real, real skinny ones. You want ones that have a nice fat profile and then taper down for this fly. And so I'm going to take maybe about four or six hackles. You know, if you got really good hackles, you probably only need four. If you have okay hackles, you might need a few more than that. All right, so I've got four hackles here. Basically, you want to look for feathers that have a nice fat portion, kind of right where the marabou you know, meets the feathered portion. You don't want stuff that's too skinny. Like here would be an example of a feather that's just too skinny. You can incorporate that into, if you wanted to use, say, six or eight hackles, you could throw it in there. But ideally, for this fly, you want nice, well-shaped tackles just looking like that. And I'm going to take two of them and line up the tips. And so I got one, two. Line up the tips. And you might have seen other people when they're tying in feathers like this strip off all this stuff. And I'm not going to. Um, pretty much found it that the, the feathers will stay in place better if you leave all this stuff. And so I'm going to trim these to well, let's say right about there. Leave a little bit of that marabou type stuff. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the other pair. And measure those two against these so they're the same size. Perfect. Now notice how those feathers have a slight concave like that. I'm going to take the other two feathers and put them concave to concave so you end up with a nice kind of flat, nice flat bunch of feathers. And what I mean by flat, if you look at them from that direction, um, you know, they're nice and flat just like that. And just kind of gather them up. That's perfect right there. Now, what I'm going to do is line up the edge of where I cut those guys off right with the point of the hook, right where I started my thread. Now, if you take your thread and just push it like that, you're just going to push those feathers around the shank of the hook. What you want to do is do a loose wrap and then pull straight down. Do that a couple of times. And if you do it right, when you let go of the feathers, they won't have flip like that on you. 
put a couple more nice tight wraps on there. Now I'm going to take some crystal flash. Pretty good amount of it. This is a bait fish fly, so you want you know the, the look of scales and flash and stuff on there. You want it to be about as long as the, the tail of the fly. And I usually just put some right across the back. Tie that in just like that. Now, my favorite part, the deer hair. This is the, uh, the funnest part of this fly for me. And if you've never tried to spin deer hair before, the first thing you want to do is make sure that you got a good stout thread, something like flat wax nylon or you know something that has the breaking strength of a couple of pounds at least. Um, that's how hard you got to pull on this stuff to make it work. And uh, you know most people will, or a lot of people will try spinning deer hair with thread that's too light and you end up breaking, breaking your thread several times and it can be kind of a frustrating experience. Um, but the main thing in working with this deer hair is, is thread pressure is you really want to pull this stuff tight. When you think you've pulled it tight, pull it even tighter. And if you break the thread, so what? Um, you know, you can just start your thread over again. And with any luck, you'll see me maybe break the thread a couple times while I tie this fly. And so the first thing I do is take some, some white deer belly hair um, and grab a pretty good wad of it and trim it pretty close to, as close to the hide as you can. You know, so you end up with a nice bunch of hair like that. Now the next thing you want to do, and it's a pretty important step, is you want to take a comb and you want to comb out that under fur. It, it might seem like kind of a, a tedious process to do, but this fuzz that's in here, and some pieces of deer hair will have more than others, but that fuzz in there serves absolutely no purpose in tying the fly. So we're going to get rid of that. Now the first thing I do is on this fly it's going to have almost like a muddler minnow type collar. So I want that collar maybe about an inch long on this particular fly. And so I'm just kind of measuring it up. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of move the deer here so it's completely enveloping the shank of the hook. And once you do that, the next step is pretty easy. You just make a loose wrap, two of them, all the way around the shank of the hook. And the whole time you want to keep holding that deer hair. Don't let go. And you can brace it against the shank of the hook. Now watch, I'm going to pull straight down and you see those deer hair fibers standing straight up. Now with pretty tight thread wraps, I'm going to kind of work my way through that nice and slowly, moving one wrap right in front of the other, just like so. And one thing that I forgot to mention that you ought to do before you start the next step is that little spot of thread where we tied the hackles in, you want to hit that with some super glue just a little bit of super glue and that'll keep the whole feather and stuff when the next step when we pack this deer hair on there and make it super tight if that guy's not glued down you'll actually push it down the shank and you'll have to put it back in position okay so I got my collar in place and I got the beginnings of my body in place now the next thing I do is grab about a, the same amount of deer hair as I did last time comb all of the under fur out of it, just like last time, get rid of all that stuff. And this time, I'm going to chop the tips off. I'm going to go just like that. And what that's going to do is when I go back to trim this fly, I don't want to trim, the, I don't want to cut any of that muddler type collar off. And if, if I don't cut the tips off of the, the next batch of deer hair, I might get the two confused. And so if you take the time to trim that, you know, it'll be real clear cut what you're supposed to trim and what you're, what you're not. 
And so what I'm going to do is just hold that chunk of deer hair in there like that, make a loose wrap all the way around, and pull straight down. And you want to pull tight. A couple of, maybe a half a dozen real tight wraps. And the next thing I'm going to do is take my left hand and hold the shank of the hook, take my right hand, and with some, you want to push pretty hard, just jam your forefinger and your thumb and just kind of move it back and forth and just press it that way. And you might not be able to see it, but I actually pushed that last clump of hair right up against the last one. And basically you just work your way down the shank, just keep doing that same thing, working with big bunches of hair, as big as you can comfortably get away with. And uh, work your way all the way up towards the eye of the hook. And basically, the, the more deer hair that you pack on here, the nicer this fly is going to be and the better it's going to float. This fly actually works also really good, uh, you know, if you tie some that aren't quite as, you know, aren't like balsa wood or cork tight. They actually fish real well as a subsurface fly with a, with a sinking line. Um, the, they almost have, will, will have almost a neutral buoyancy and you'll strip it and the, the sinking line will kind of make it just sit there and almost hover, which is kind of a, a neat thing to do. And one thing you want to do maybe every couple bunches of hair that you tie is you want to take some super glue or some head cement and just periodically put just a little tiny bit onto uh, you know, the last bunch that you did, just that little bit of thread right there. And what that'll do is that'll keep the deer hair, once you get it tied in, it'll keep it from spinning. And that's, that should be good enough. You don't have to go right up to the eye of the hook. And um, I'm also going to put a little, after I'm done trimming this guy, I'm going to put a weed guard on there. And if you leave a little, you know, sixteenth of an inch space between, you know, the deer hair and the eye of the hook, it'll make that a lot easier. So I'm just going to do a quick whip finish and cut off my thread and then trim it and then go back, reattach my thread, and tie the weed guard in. Now, how I like to trim these guys is to take a double-edged razor blade. You can use scissors, too, if you want to. Um, a long-bladed scissor will help a lot rather than a short-bladed scissor. Um, but if you're careful, and you do want to be careful with these things because they, they are very sharp and you can slice the bejesus out of you, you don't want to... You don't want to go to the hospital and get stitches. Uh, it's happened before. Um, but how I like to trim these is into almost a bullet shape, where you start out um, you know, by the eye of the hook fairly tight, and then a nice, I mean, just basically like a bullet. So what I'm going to do is trim um, basically the top first, 
and just start out very slowly. A, a good new razor blade will make this uh, very easy. It'll just really slice through it nice and gently. Just like that. And one, be careful once you get back to the collar. Remember, you don't want to cut off any of those not that the nice tips there for muddler-like collar. And so I got the top trimmed and do the same exact thing to the bottom. That's pretty good. Now do the same thing to the sides. Start out pretty close to the eye of the hook and just make a nice bullet shape. Okay, now you just go back and take the edges. Basically, if you look at the fly like that, it'll look almost square. And kind of the next step is to just take those square edges off. And then you're pretty much got it trimmed to about the right shape. I mean, you can spend as much time as you want to trim these and, and sculpt them into. Uh, you know, the exact shape you want to, but just a nice bullet shape works really good for this guy. And then maybe go back and pull down that collar and just get those fibers that you missed with the razor blade in the back here. Missed an edge there. That's good, right there. Now the next step, you can do this with scissors too. It might be a little bit easier if you've never done it to do it with scissors, but I'm gonna cut two little eye sockets. And I do it with the razor blade. Um, basically you take the, the, the one edge of the razor blade and just press it into that deer hair and just make a nice little eye socket. You can do the same thing with, with scissors too. And those eyes will stay in there a lot better if you have a little recess for them to sit in. But eventually the eyeballs are going to fall off. It doesn't really seem to matter much. Um, the fish will like it just as good with or without the eyeballs. I like mine with eyeballs. Then I take just some, some doll eyes. These are maybe three millimeter and um, just going to drop a little bit of Zappa Gap into the socket and then just drop that guy in there and just hold down with you know your your fingernail or your finger just for a second just for it to set up and once you hold it there for a second it's on there for good Do the same thing to the other side. Perfect. Now I'm going to reattach my thread and throw on a quick weed guard. If you're going to fish this guy around mangroves or, you know, if you're a largemouth bass fishing with this guy, you know, it's not really worth fishing unless it's got a weed guard on there. So I'm going to take some, you know, about some 16 pound hard saltwater monofilament. That's the best stuff to use for weed guards. And cut a piece maybe that's about two inches long. 
And basically what I'm going to do is double it over and kind of crimp it down. Just like that. And then I'm going to slip where I have it crimped down right over the eye of the hook just like that. And then with my thread I'm going to wind over it a couple of times. And that's perfect just like that. And you whip finish this guy and you're done. You definitely want to hit this head uh, where you have the thread and that weed guard with some head cement or super glue um, just to hold it all in place. And then you know you can trim that weed guard. We don't obviously don't need it that long. Maybe just uh, you know about half an inch, three quarters of an inch long. That'll keep it from getting hung up. But uh, yeah, next time you go saltwater fishing, it doesn't really matter what it's for. Anything that will eat a floating topwater bait fish um, will definitely eat this thing. Um, give it a shot.